HMAS Melbourne, flagship of the Royal Australian Navy, on exercise with other fleet units off the East Australian coast. For most Australians, their working day is just beginning. But here, 20 miles out to sea in the RAN's exercise area, it's only mid-watch. It's a busy time. Tracker anti-submarine aircraft are to be launched. Others returning home again at the end of a fruitless submarine search. Over our bridge, uh, recovery completed. Ship is turning out of wind. Uh, base 4300. Radio, Roger. 843, 849, uh, my base course uh, 300. Over. Kilo 825831, base course 300. 825, Roger. You're heading for the new position as 215. Roger, raise the ball. Roger, raising the ball. As Melbourne changes course, her helicopters are ordered to reform the anti-submarine screen, her protection against her quarry and the enemy, the submarine. Complete 177 transmission, bearing 140. Stand by to come to periscope, Jeff. No contact sonar. Keep 55 feet. Keep 55 feet. Stand by queue. Playing the part of the villain today is HMAS Otway. Her captain and crew are anxious to know the whereabouts of the searchers and equally anxious not to be detected. Otway is one of the modern Oberon-class submarines which form the first Australian submarine squadron. The Oberons are quiet and deadly and skillfully handled, almost impossible to detect. 70. 70. 60 feet. 59. Breaking. 58. 57, 56, 55 feet. Standard procedure. Standard procedure. Let's queue. Utilize. Nothing written on the bearing. But they're going to have to work hard to find her. Starboard 15, steer 140. 15, steer 140. One ship which Otway need not worry about today is HMAS Hobart, which is taking part in a separate gunnery exercise at the nearby naval firing range. One of three guided missile destroyers forming the first Australian destroyer squadron Hobart's main armament includes the Tata surface-to-air missile system and automatic 5-inch guns. Like her sister ships Brisbane and Perth, HMAS Hobart served with distinction in Vietnam, where the value of naval gunfire support was again proven. Hobart's two guns give her greater firepower than the World War II cruiser HMAS Australia, which carried eight eight-inch guns and eight four-inch guns. Guns can be used for a variety of tasks, including ground support, interdiction, and fleet defense. In an age of missiles, the naval gun is far from superseded. While Hobart works up her gunnery systems off the New South Wales coast, other ships of the RAN are traversing the Great Australian Bight. On passage between Melbourne and Fremantle, HMAS Brisbane takes part in an underway replenishment from the fleet oiler HMAS Supply. Until the refinement of ships and techniques in World War II, which allowed refuelling to be carried out at sea, warships were restricted in their areas of operations by the proximity of shore bases. Today, a ship can refuel wherever it is operating if it has access to support ships like supply.
Refueling techniques have been steadily improved over the years, and one of the latest developments is probe refueling. Advantages include quicker, cleaner coupling, and the ability for the ships to break apart with a minimum of fuss or delay. In another part of the world, another of the Navy's support ships, HMAS Stalwart, provides assistance to other fleet units. Stalwart is a destroyer tender, and her task is to assist other warships with repairs and maintenance when they're away from base facilities. One of the biggest ships in the fleet Stalwart is fitted out from stem to stern with workshops and equipment, while three quarters of her ship's company are technically qualified to do anything from forging and machining to intricate electronics repairs. Meanwhile, not far away in the South China Sea, some of the RAN's small ships exercise their skills. These ships are members of the 1st Australian Mine Countermeasure Squadron, which includes both minesweepers and mine hunters. Wooden hulled, so they will not attract nor detonate magnetic mines, these small ships have a big and dangerous job. In wartime, they would clear mines from harbour entries and shipping lanes. One method is to stream wires and cutting devices to cut anchored mines loose so they can be de or blown up in safety. Back in Australian waters, Tracker 843, doggedly pursuing its search pattern, flies into the submarine's area, and the exercise takes a vital turn. Unaware of the presence of the Tracker, the captain has decided to bring his submarine to periscope depth for a quick visual check for surface units. Echo 3, contact Alpha, possible submarine, 340 at 15. Roger 3. Mike 4, this is 843, possible submarine contact 34015, investigating. Down fired. Keep it down. Track up. Fire. About 14, 15 miles away. Tech 3, lost contact. Roger 3. Mike 4, 843, lost contact this time. Lost 3, uh, Tracker 843, reports he has a disappearing radar contact. Possible submarine in position 340, 15 miles. Over. Off, Roger. Uh, I've got a report from the tracker, sir, of a sinker 34015 up here, so the uh, two Wessex on task on the screen. I suggest we uh, detach the two helicopters from the screen to join the tracker, see if they can make contact, and that the main body ought to the west to uh, get clear of the area. Yes, Captain, I agree with that sound. Uh, keep the escorts with you for the time being. Uh, our intention will be to keep clear of that uh, scene of action and work round to the northwest so we can pick up our northwest of the uh, PIM uh, as soon as we can. Right. Uh, 27020 to the bridge and carry out a wave. Aye, sir. Bridge ops. From the captain. Alter the course of the main body to 270. Tracker 43 has got a sinker bearing 340, 15 miles. We're dispatching the Wessex to join it. Tell the ADR to uh, detach the two dippers to join 4 3. Aye, sir. On the sinker. Dispatch Wessex 2 3 and 3 1 to join Tracker 4 3 in prosecuting his sinker 3 4 0 15 miles. ADR, yeah, right, John. Helo controller, send the two helos up to uh, assist the tracker. Aye, sir. 
dip game and this is Mike 4. Override and break dip. Dip started at 3 4 0. 4 8 4 3 4 2 5. Backer 843, having contacted the Otway briefly before it dived, now has to try and re-establish contact with the submarine. Pilot Deco, continue inbound and stand by to lay a solenoid pattern 3 Alpha on data. Roger, set me up for the first drop. Yes, set up. Mike 4843, stand by on top datum. On top datum now, now, now. Spinning Maypole 1. The tracker drops a sonar boy into the sea. On contact with the water, it begins transmitting. If the submarine is near, the sonar echoes will pinpoint the submarine's position. While the noose about the submarine tightens, Melbourne is preparing to launch some of her fighter aircraft on another mission. Melbourne is not solely an anti-submarine carrier. She also has a strike role, and her Skyhawk jet fighter bombers are powerful weapons. Melbourne can carry various mixes of fighter and anti-submarine aircraft to suit particular roles or requirements. The Skyhawks are launched to take part in a combined exercise with the Army. Though not large for a fighter aircraft, the Skyhawks carry a formidable payload, up to twice their own weight, including bombs and rockets. They also have a wide operating radius, which can be increased by air-to-air -air refueling. In a battlefield situation, an aircraft carrier could provide a forward air base within minutes flying time of the front. An air base close to the battle zone enables transit time to be reduced and gives the aircraft more time on task. Destroy enemy tanks and transport convoy on track at grid 770-076. Now, bare minutes away from the target, the Skyhawks form for their final run. Acting on information radioed by the ground forces, the Skyhawks mount their attacks. From the dust of simulated battle to the clear waters of the barrier reef. The guns are manned again in a different place and for a different reason. A Navy patrol boat, HMAS Barbette, has apprehended a foreign fishing vessel suspected of poaching. The guns will not be needed except to bridge a language barrier. But a party of sailors will go aboard the fishing boat while it's escorted back to the mainland to be handed over to civil authorities. This boat is one of dozens checked out by Navy patrol boats during each fishing season.
Patrol boats based at Cairns and Darwin are on constant patrol of Australian fishing grounds. With the boarding party is an inspector from the Department of Primary Industry, which is responsible for policing fisheries regulations. Boats found guilty of illegal fishing face heavy fines and confiscation of the catch, and sometimes even the vessel itself. Patrol boats perform a wide variety of tasks in the RAN. Besides fisheries surveillance, they're used for patrol duties, training, and survey work. Surveying Australian and nearby waters is the responsibility of the RAN's hydrographic service. Principal ship used in this role is HMAS Moresby, here working with patrol boats off the northern Australian coast. All boats, uh, this is the Parmike. Uh, stand by for fix number one. Ten seconds. All boats, uh, stand by. Stand by. Fix green at 27. The ships are recording depths using echo sounders to gather data for use in naval charts. Moresby and her consorts will steam thousands of carefully plotted miles to gather the information on depths, distances, hazards, coastline and landmarks. The survey results are meticulously recorded to provide precise information to be later published in charts for use by the world's mariners. 1,500 miles away, off the Victorian coast, the destroyer HMAS Vampire is ready to test a new gunnery system. New contact, sir. Bogey, 31038 miles. Red ship and Closing, designated bogey, 31037. Today's mission is an aerial engagement. The target, a jet aircraft, is closing fast. A bridge, Captain, we have a new detection bogey uh, bearing 310, currently about 36 miles. Over. Bridge, Radars and computers continuously feed information about the approaching aircraft, its bearing, speed, altitude, relating them to Vampire's own changing position. Aircraft, bearing 320. Red 45's stood to, sir. Bridge, uh, Captain, come right, stair 060, increase speed to 30 knots, over. Bogey now, 25 miles. All turrets, clutch to auto. Red system. Red system, salvos. The arcs will be red, uh, correction, red 90 bridge. In range, sir. Roger, engage when ready. Range, zero, seven, zero. About to open fire now, sir. Roger. Red system, engage. Vampire is a member of the second Australian destroyer squadron. Her six 4.5-inch guns and modern fire control systems, which give her armament comparable to a light cruiser, can be used for surface and anti-aircraft engagements. Anti-submarine detection equipment and weapons further increase Vampire's versatility. As one naval attack draws to a close, another is about to be mounted. The submarine search is intensifying now as new ears. Here, the Wessex helicopter's sonar are added to others already listening for the telltale echoes from the hidden submarine. Sounds like a new air transmission. Move it, sir. AQS 30 transmissions from the north. Estimate not in contact. Roger. From the north, we must have got through them. Go to 350 feet. Having detected the presence of the Wessex, the captain takes Otway deeper to avoid detection. In contact, bearing north, transmission north, 3,000 yards. Mike 4, this is 825, contact, possible submarine, bearing 180, range 1,000 yards, confidence 5. G, sir, Kilo 25 is hot, 180, 1,000 yards. Roger, where is uh, Hilo 825 from then? 825 bears 330, 12 miles. Yeah.
Thanks, Lady Arm. Hilo 825 reporting as a scanner contact. High confidence in position 330, 12 miles. Over. Up, Roger. I think we should uh, detach the two escorts as a service attack in at this stage and uh, uh, we'll get the Wessex to stand by on deck to provide a screen for Melbourne as soon as we can. Taz, tell the screen commander to form the service attack unit and join the helo in contact. Put to the southwest, clear the danger area, 240. 240, sir. Great jobs. From the captain, alter the course of the main body to 240. The submarine, now pinpointed, the net begins to close. Destined to play the lead role in the attack on the submarine, the destroyer escort HMAS Torrens. Torrens, modern, well-equipped, is primarily an anti-submarine ship. This is her element. We're coming right uh, to the east. Hunter, Axis 100, 40-40. Hunter Axis 100, 40, 40, Roger. Hunter Axis 100, 40, 40. Pass the intentions to Bravo 2. Bravo 2, this is Charlie 6, intentions. Intend direct method of approach to datum. Plan red, quadrantal, and three alpha. Plan Black. Bravo 2. Torren sister ship, HMAS Yarra. Datum Bears 10060. Call sign Charlie 6 Brother, Sector Southwest. Call sign Bravo 2 Sister, Sector Northwest. Over. Console is on a course of 040, speed 18. Roger. SCR, both choppers uh, are now in contact. Hunter, investigate 080. 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 Hunter, investigate Cops SCR, Hunter contact, bearing a 085, range 6,000 yards. Indicating three knots high Doppler, classified as possible. Roger. Right, that's the same contact that the helos have got. Let's get an Icara away. Action Icara. Action Icara. Icara. Australian designed, this anti-submarine missile system is fitted to nine Australian destroyers and has been introduced into other navies. The Icara system incorporates a missile carrying a homing torpedo, which the ship can direct to the vicinity of the submarine. More information on the contact. Hunter's contact is steady on 085, 6000, indicating the three knots high Doppler, painting in Bravo Charlie beams, marking on all displays, classified in the submarine. Ops, Roger. Chopper 25 will be the only one that'll be in the way, sir. I suggest we get him to scram north. Orders are given to clear the helicopter out of the area. Get 25 to scram north. Aye aye, sir. 825, this is Charlie 6, scram north. As the Icara missile nears the submarine, its torpedo separates and is parachuted into the sea. 
Then it will home onto the submarine. Bravo 2, this is Charlie 6, Mark Icara, dog box No, they didn't do too badly this time. Exercise over. Night falls, but the Navy's day goes on. The Royal Australian Navy has more than 17,000 men, over 50 ships and a fleet air arm. It is compact, efficient, increasingly self-reliant, capable of a wide variety of tasks. Sea power, insurance for a peaceful world.